The boy is so poor, his whole family went on a trip and forgot him at home. The family is going abroad for Christmas. But the night before they left, the wind was so strong that it blew branches onto power lines and the power went out. Because the family had an electronic alarm clock, they all overslept. Time was tight and there were so many children the several adults rushed the children onto the plane. But mom K feels like she's forgotten something. She just can't remember it. You know, eh. What she forgot was this kid Kevin. He was left at home by his parents. But Kevin is happy because he hates his family. Kevin had a big fight with his family last night. So he made a wish for his family to disappear. He thought his wish had come true. Kevin, now, Kevin is eating snacks and watching movies without adults around. And Kate blames herself. Kevin, I think it's inevitable that you'll forget something. And he left his glasses at home. Why is she so worried? One is because Kevin is young and naughty. And she was worried that Kevin was in danger. It's really not safe for a child to be at home. They are right to worry. Because the thieves were already watching their house. The two thieves are hardened criminals. They specialize in stealing from families going on holiday at Christmas. He already knows what's going on in Kevin's house right down to when the lights go on. The thieves knew Kevin and his family were out of the house. They were going to just knock on the door. But Kevin hears the noise and quickly turns on the lights. When the two thieves saw the light on, they didn't dare to do anything. So they had to steal from other houses first. By this time, Kevin was scared enough to crawl under the bed. He tried to ask his neighbor Marv for help, but Marv was even scarier than the thief. Marv is an old man who lives alone. Rumor has it is a killer, but he wasn't arrested because there wasn't enough evidence. After shaking for a while, Kevin summoned his courage again. He didn't think he was a coward. He was the man of the house now. He went out of the house and shouted, I'm not afraid anymore. H H H H H H H H H H H. Kevin, when Kevin's parents got off the plane, they called the police. They want the police to check on the baby. But the cops were so lazy, they wouldn't go to any of them. The earliest return flight is the day after tomorrow. Kate can't wait. She would stay at the airport, find someone to change her ticket then let her husband take the family to Paris first. Can't live without money? The next morning, Kevin took his brother's pocket money. But it was a little high, so Kevin had to climb up. Suddenly, the board broke. My brother's spider was released. But Kevin gets his pocket money, too. He is ready to go shopping. Kevin wants to buy a toothbrush and go home. But he runs into Marv again. Marv's hand was bleeding. Kevin, I'm scared again. He runs away. Kevin, yes, I did. Kevin, yes, I did. Kevin, yes. I did. One of the thieves recognized Kevin. He suspects Kevin is alone at home. So he follows Kevin quietly. Kevin finds him. Too. He ran only a few steps before the thieves lost him. After that, Kevin remembered what happened to him last night. He's gonna have to be a little defensive. That night, the thieves came to Kevin's door. They found the room brightly lit. And what seemed to be a party going on. It was all a smoke screen by Kevin. The figures in the house are all props. The thieves had to give up stealing again quietly left. Kevin not only managed to scare off the thief, but also used the movie dialogue to prank the delivery man. Before I pump your guts full of lit. One, two, ten. However, Kevin's secret of being home alone has been discovered by the thieves who have been squatting outside the house. They were ecstatic and planned the burglary at 9 p.m. This happened to be hidden in the attic Kevin saw. He was afraid, so he ran to Santa to make a wish. He wants his family back. Otherwise, he really didn't have the confidence to deal with the thieves. But Santa Claus can help him, can only give him a few jelly beans as a gift. Kevin walks past the church on his way home. He thinks he made his family disappear. He had sinned and wanted God to forgive him. When Kevin arrives at the church, he meets Marv again. Marv was very kind, wished him a Merry Christmas and Saturday down to chat with him. Turns out they're all the same. They both had bad relationships with their families. Marv and his son had a fight last year and never saw each other again. Today, he came secretly to see his granddaughter sing because his son wouldn't let him see his granddaughter. Kevin, Marv, why don't you call your son? Marv says he's been afraid to call for fear of rejection. Kevin shared his feelings about the past two days. I used to be so scared of the basement because it's damp and dark inside. Then I got up my nerve and went to the basement to wash clothes and found it wasn't terrible. So you should give your son a call. Whether you succeed or not, at least when you know the result, you don't have to be afraid anymore. What Kevin knew, Marv didn't know before. After this talk, they also formed a friendship. Kevin's not gonna run away the minute he sees Marv. After Marv's persuasion, Kevin also grows up. He is the man of the house. When the grown-ups are away, he made up his mind to defend his house. Kevin lays out the plan and arranges it carefully around the room. The two thieves also arrived on time. At first, they underestimated Kevin's determination, 
and challenge him from the front door. Kevin proved his determination with an air rifle. Hello. The thieves decided to split up, breaking into the basement and backyard. What they didn't know was that Kevin had already made preparations. He splashed water on the steps to make them freeze. The two thieves had stepped up and fell down. The thin man managed to get into the house. When he pulled the cord, an iron fell. The fat man finally approached the gate. But when he grabbed it, the hot doorknob sent him down the steps again. The asphalt in the basement has glued off the skinny man's shoes. But even worse, there was a nail in the stairs. The fat man was angry and returned to the gate. He broke him without thinking. But he set it off again. He plunged headlong into the snow. The top of his head was burned in the shape of the Mediterranean Sea. After being cranked by Kevin for a long time, the thieves finally meet each other on the stairs. Kevin takes his time flirting with them on the second floor. Kevin drops a paint bucket as they go upstairs. The fat man hit in the past. The thin man was hit. While the fat man was enjoying himself, a paint bucket at him. Kevin took the opportunity to call the police. The address he told the police was Marv's house next door. At that moment, the two thieves climbed up the stairs. The fat man tripped over the rope. The thin man jumps and catches Kevin. This is bad. Kevin. But then Kevin remembers that his brother's spider is crawling over here. Kevin catches the spider and puts it on the thin man's face. The thin man gave a terrible cry. Kevin runs downstairs to Marv's house. But he was caught by thieves. Just when they were proud and thought they had avenged themselves, Marv appears and smashes the thin man's head with a shovel. In this way, the two thieves were caught by the police. Kevin put the house back together and waited for his parents. To return but he didn't see any of his family until the next morning he comes back just as kevin is getting frustrated she apologized sincerely to him kevin runs over to kate and forgives her after that the others came back to accompany him kevin well you know what kevin i'm sorry kevin is attracted to the scene outside his window marv is hugging his son looks like he's finally got the courage to reclaim his family they wave to each other through the window sharing a happiness only the two of them could understand. A family is a family after all.